this time with Reverend Douglas Watson will come up. Doug has been our area home missionary responsible for the oversight of our congregation, and he will uh, introduce uh, the constitutional question. It's uh, my privilege to be here uh, this evening for the purpose of acknowledging that this is a congregation of the Church of Jesus Christ, and most particularly a congregation of the Orthodox Presbyterian Church. At its meeting on uh, November 19th, the Presbytery did act to uh, call for this meeting so that uh, we might come together this evening and on this occasion uh, acknowledge that the Lord has brought a group of people to that point where we were, will acknowledge that they are a congregation uh, by the standards of the church. In doing this, there have been various things that have happened over the years. Uh, this has been a congregation that has uh, met as a mission work of the Presbytery for, for uh, quite some time, and uh, it is uh, indeed a good thing to see that uh, now we are ready to uh, say who are the people of this congregation. And so a list of those people has been gathered and uh, you have acknowledged your desire to be a part of the Orthodox Presbyterian Church. And uh, that uh, list of uh, members uh, has been presented to the Presbytery. Uh, you have chosen two men to serve as elders in the congregation. And uh, you have also uh, determined to uh, call uh, Rich as your uh, pastor. And so we are here tonight to accomplish those many uh, things, uh, acknowledging first that you are indeed a particular congregation of the Orthodox Presbyterian Church. Secondly, to ordain and install uh, the two men that you have uh, chosen as uh, ruling elders among you. And uh, finally, to install uh, Rich McLaren as your pastor. And so first, uh, we, we take up the matter of Acknowledging that you are a congregation of the Church of Jesus Christ, and particularly of uh, the Orthodox Presbyterian Church. We do that rather simply. In fact, I've uh, done this on other occasions, and I sometimes feel like, wow, all this, and this is all we do. But, uh, you know, that's, that's the way it is sometimes. Uh, it's, it's all the preparation, you know, that uh, is, uh, is there to be done. And uh, then when, when uh, it comes time to look around the room and see, oh yes, I've gotten it all painted and everything's all taken care of, you get to admire it. Well, that's where we are. We're about to admire uh, what uh, has taken place. So to you who are uh, those who have expressed your desire to be uh, recognized as the charter members of First Presbyterian Church in Percocy, I put this question. In reliance upon God for strength, do you solemnly promise to walk together as a church of Jesus Christ according to the Word of God and the Constitution of the Orthodox Presbyterian Church? If so, would you please raise your right hand, please? Thank you. As you have uh, raised your hands and acknowledged in response to that question in the affirmative, I uh, now declare that we recognize you as a new and separate congregation of the regional church, and uh, we will proceed then uh, to the ordination and installation of your officers. However, at this time, we're going to ask Elder uh, George Bonhoff to come and give a charge to you as a congregation. And I thought, 
I would like to begin by explaining just what we mean by the term charge to the congregation. The word charge has a lot of different meanings in our culture, but in this case, it means to place or impose a duty or a responsibility on someone. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, Paul gives young Timothy a series of commands, and then he says to him, I charge you to keep these commands. Paul was giving Timothy the charge. Tonight, I have been asked to speak to you, the members of this congregation, to remind you of your duties and your responsibilities toward your pastor, Richard McLaren. I have been asked to bring the charge to the congregation. I'd like to begin by reading a very familiar passage from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 6. This is the Word of God. Very truly I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Jesus here was talking to the Pharisees about sheep and shepherds. But our interest tonight is not about the reaction of the Pharisees. Tonight we want to look at what Jesus had to say about sheep and shepherds, and how you, the members of this sheepfold, now this particular congregation of the Orthodox Presbyterian Church, how you should respond to your under-shepherd, Pastor McLaren. First, Jesus says, the sheep listen to the voice of the shepherd. I encourage you to listen to Pastor McLaren. He's a wise man. He has had seminary training. He has had years of experience. And for that reason, his earthly wisdom may well be worth listening to. But when he tells you what Jesus says, when he brings you the Word of God, when he stands here on Sunday and preaches and teaches, listen. Listen carefully. He is bringing you the Word of God. And you should not only listen when he speaks publicly, but you must listen when he takes you aside and speaks to you privately in his office or during a visit. <coughs> listen to him when he comforts and encourages you. Listen and be ready to submit when he speaks to you a word of correction or of discipline. Then too, he is bringing you the Word of God. Jesus says sheep not only listen to the shepherd, but they also follow him. Jesus says the shepherd goes ahead of the flock. He's out in front. He's leading, looking for green pastures and still waters. He is alert for danger, but he also keeps his eye on the flock. He knows the sheep. He knows them by name, and if he knows if someone has wandered away or has gotten lost. So I encourage you tonight to follow Pastor McLaren. Trust his leadership, his training, his years of experience. You know that being a leader is not an easy task. It can be tiring. It can be a lonely job. So encourage him. Thank him. Tell him once in a while how much a particular class or a message or a worship service meant to you. 
Give him a phone call. Write him a note. You can even send him a text message. If you look here, you know he's not a technology-challenged pastor. <coughs> Listen to your pastor. Follow his leadership. But as you do, I would encourage you also to protect his time. By that I mean respect the time he sets aside for his pastoral duties, his time for sermon preparation and for study. Don't let congregational demands rob him of his day off, or rob him of some time to rest, or rob him of some time to take vacation. And above all, pray for him. Pray for him regularly. Pray that he will have the strength and the wisdom to fulfill his role as the under-shepherd, the leader of this flock. Sheep listen and follow, but they can also be useful to the shepherd. Sheep provide clothing, sheep provide food, and you can be useful to your pastor as well. If he calls, wants to come for a visit, clear your schedule. Welcome him. When you have needs, let him know what they are. He is here to help you. But you have a responsibility to tell him what is on your mind. And finally, be ready to assist. Be ready to help out when there is a need. A need for a teacher or for someone to serve on a committee or to show hospitality. Don't expect Pastor McLaren to do everything. He's your pastor. He's not Superman. And honor the financial terms of his call. I know this church has been very faithful in supporting this work financially, and I would encourage you to continue to support this church and your pastor financially. Pastor McLaren has served this church for more than 15 years. He has seen many people come and go. He has seen many people visit. Some came just once. Some stayed for a few weeks. Some stayed for a few years, but then they moved on. But you, the members of First Church, are different. Not only have you stayed, you have become members of this congregation. You have committed yourselves to this work. You are what we would call on our home missions committee, a core group. You are the committed members around which God will build this church. We do not know how that building process will proceed, but you are the foundation of that work. So tonight, I charge you to listen, to follow, to support your pastor here at First Presbyterian Church. Work together with him to build on this core group and with God's blessing, see this building filled with his people. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we are thankful to you for the committed members of First Presbyterian Church. We thank you for the way you have drawn them to this congregation. We thank you for the love that they have for one another and for their pastor. Bless them, we pray, and use them as you, O oh God, would see fit to encourage one another, to grow this church, to reach out to the community around in and around Pergasy, Pennsylvania, Lord, we pray that you will bless them and enable them to reach out with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his name we pray.